Hi, so today I just wanted to have a little chat about why I'm so interested and passionate about the mind-body connection. Um, it's absolutely tipping it down outside, so you might struggle to hear me, so I'm going to speak up a little bit, so that's why it might seem like I'm shouting, I'm not. Um, so for me, the way I work now with people when they come to me and if they have something physically that's going on with them, such as a disease or illness, I'm always really interested in what was going on in their life when it first manifested. And I am very curious about anything that was happening or had happened in the run up to them getting ill or poorly or even you know breaking something or something going wrong with their body and seeing if there was something unresolved around that that showed up physically now this is something that can be really challenging for a lot of people and i can completely understand why it can possibly seem like we are blaming the person um, for having a diagnosis and that's absolutely not my intention at all. So for me, the history that of, of why it's so, um, it, has, it is of so resonance for me is that years ago, I, when I was living in Dubai, I had a really busy PR job at the time and I'd always been really interested in well-being, been very sensitive to energy since I was a little girl. Um, and it was around that time I was learning Reiki out there and EFT and I was in a relationship with somebody and I'd been in this relationship for about, I think four years at this stage and it wasn't the right relationship but um, I was pretty resistant to change. I'm still not the biggest fan of change but I'm working on it. And it was a relationship I should have been leaving and I didn't because you know of fear and all the reasons why we stay in things that aren't necessarily good for us. So at that time I was also doing Taekwondo and um, I was really in, enjoying it and finding it challenging and it was it was great, great outlet for me. And when I was going for my red belt I just landed funny on a kick and my foot broke. Or rather I fractured a bone in my foot and it was um, an interesting time because my then um, my then boyfriend um, wasn't particularly sort of um, sympathetic and at the time he was like oh it's not broken you'll be fine and the next morning I can walk on it so I went I had to ask him to give me a lift and anyway I went to get it seen to and it turns out it was broken so you know on the face of it that's just a regular normal incident for you know doing taekwondo it's a, it's a contact sport and you land funny and your foot breaks there's nothing else to that story except that my foot just wouldn't heal. And I was in this relationship and it just would not heal. And um, I, the, you know, I had it all casted up and everything. And each time I go back for a checkup and they'd sort of re-x-ray and they were just like, oh, this is interesting. It's, it should have, you know, it should have fused together. It wasn't a particularly bad fracture and it, it just wouldn't. It was causing me loads of problems. And eventually I ended up you know, and so at that time as well, it's important to add that, um, you know, it's a pain in the bum when you when you do something like that. It's really inconvenient, um, especially where I worked. I worked in an office. There's lots of, you know, it's just not easy to get around. I lived in a high rise apartment. I lived in, I worked in an office, and there was just just a lot of having to walk around and jump into taxis and things. And I, you know, it's when you kind of really could do with a support system. And it really shone a light on how my relationship wasn't the right one for me. It wasn't a particularly nurturing space for me. Um, anyway, I continued to stay until eventually at some point, enough was enough and I, and I left the relationship. And my foot just sort of healed, kind of like, oh, it felt like it was an overnight thing, which it obviously wasn't, but it, it just healed really quickly after that. At the time I was like, oh, okay, well, brilliant, it's healed, didn't think more about it. But I was also doing more courses, so I'd gone to, um, I think the first one was Switzerland, to do a course um, called Body Mirror Healing. And I was introduced to this wonderful man called Martin Brockman, who was my teacher. 
and it was just the most eye-opening experience. He was talking about our body is a mirror of our consciousness and how if we have things in our life that are upsetting us or affecting us or challenging us, if we don't resolve them, um, what tends to happen is we get a message. So our intuition will say mm, something about this. I'm not happy about either this relationship or this thing that's happened or this way of being. I'm not happy about this. And so it shows up first of all as an, as an inner nudge as, you know, our intuition. And then if we ignore that, and if it's something that really is having an effect on us, um, it eventually shows up physically. So this is what my teacher was saying. And it was really kind of eye-opening for me. And, um, but I had a really strong um, resonance with this, with this teacher. And what I feel that sometimes when I come across certain people and certain teachings, I get a very strong kind of inner yes which I trust. So the practical, logical side of me was like, come on now, you know, what, breaking my foot, really? That was just a taekwondo accident. Um, but, you know, I trusted the inner yes. So I then kind of did an inventory of any time I'd ever um, injured myself or um, been ill with anything and all the stuff that I could remember at least. And I, I checked out what was going on for me in my inner world. And each time I was able to pinpoint something that had been going on that I had not um, resolved and it had shown up physically. So I'm lucky enough to say that I've, you know, I'm, I'm a very healthy person and I'm fairly balanced and I've always been that way really. So I don't have a lot of, um, big juicy illnesses to kind of compare it to but I have you know obviously worked with a lot of people and I continue to work with a lot of people so I will always you know try and identify or just at least chat about what's been going on for you and um, so in the case of my foot so I was in a relationship so I worked with the chakra system which is what I was taught in um, the body mirror course and if you're right-handed, which I am, and I'm a female, so my right side is my male side. My root chakra, which is about feeling safe, feeling nurtured, feeling grounded, feeling supported, um, is goes down from my sort of base of my spine, down through my legs, uh, knees, ankles, feet. Um, and again, my right side is my male side, so it can be connected with, especially when it's re with regards to your feet, stepping forward, walking towards something that you want or moving away from something that isn't supporting you. And it can also be connected to relationships with the man in your life. So it was really sort of, um, it, it fit for me. I had been in this relationship that, you know, through no fault of either of our own, it just wasn't the right relationship. It wasn't nurturing, it wasn't supportive it wasn't the right one and because of fear I'd stayed in it for easily a year longer than I, I should have done really and I didn't listen to my inner nudges I just kept giving into the fear and staying uh, and eventually this happened and then it really shone this light on how really unsupportive this this relationship was for me in this home life because we lived together um, and how it wouldn't heal when, when we were when we were together and when, how I, when I walked out of it it healed really quickly and um, so my teacher at the time Martin he had this really interesting story which was very compelling about how when he uh, was a younger man he worked he was he's American he was an American guy uh, he's no longer with us sadly um, but when he was a younger guy he worked in um, on Wall Street I believe he, he worked in, in an area that he was really it didn't didn't fulfill him it wasn't his it wasn't what he was meant to be doing with his life he was in a relationship he didn't want to be in so he was married with children doing this really kind of high-powered job that was just not a fit for him and he was desperately unhappy in his life and one day he um he well he began to get really poorly and he got it checked out and they found a tumor so a, it was a spinal tumor it was wrapped around his spine i believe and they said to him that um 
the diagnosis was awful you know basically you're gonna die um it's just a matter of when you know if you cough or you sneeze or you laugh that could just be it because it was it was in such a um such a, an uncomfortable area and it was it could be so affected by the slightest movements so he was basically given a death sentence and at that time he um didn't want to accept that death sentence he didn't believe that it was his time and he basically just did a really radical inventory of his life um he traveled he went to india i believe and he studied the chakra system he basically absorbed as much information as he could about health and well-being um, and not from a western perspective necessarily but more from the sort of eastern perspective because there's a lot more awareness there about the mind-body connection so he basically devoured all this information and he had this realization that um it was important to listen to his inner world and listen to his inner thoughts so what you know what was working for him and what wasn't working for him and he you know he's very honest with himself and he realized he's in the wrong job he's in the wrong relationship he was desperately desperately unhappy so he made a commitment to himself to say yes to what felt right and say no to what didn't feel right every day and he also held the vision of going into his doctors and them saying we've made a mistake we can't find anything there's a lot more to his story than this and i really recommend his book which i'll um put in the comments um so this is what he did and so every day he followed his yes religiously followed his yes because this was life or death now there was no playing around and um interestingly one of his yeses was his voice his body was craving um foods like pizza coca-cola meat and a lot of this sort of the, his field of people that he was following and interested in were like you know you can't eat that shit it's really bad for you you've got cancer you know you're dying you can't be eating this junk food and drinking coke and eating pizza you know and eating meat um but he held fast and he held true and he said this is what my body's asking for this is what i'm going to give my body and he followed it because that was his that's what his body was telling him it needed uh and it turns out when he talks about this you know when he was teaching it to us he was saying look those kind of foods they have a particular energy and the energy that they have is a yang energy it's a very male energy and um he'd been very yin he'd been very kind of out of his male power for a really long time and it was important for him in in his particular journey to follow that and to have this very strong masculine energy around him and within him so i'm not saying to you go and eat pizza and drink coca cola i'm just pointing out here that that's that was his particular path and he was saying yes to what felt right for him and he made sure he said no to what wasn't right for him he left his marriage he left his job he made you know really radical life changes and sure enough and i can't remember how much later it was um i'm thinking it was a few months later but he went into his doctors and they said we've made a mistake we can't find anything there's nothing here and he had this sort of you know just this real sense of yeah i listened i listened to this and you know my body and it guided me and so martin then went on to teach and write books and his courses you know i did some of his courses i you know studied with him in um, switzerland and in france a couple of times and he was really really inspirational for me and it's something that has completely informed how i practice so all that being said you know this is your journey for you to explore or not explore so in life take what you need disregard the rest but keep an open mind and this is something that definitely you know will require an open mind for some people but there are so many amazing authors on this um, and i'll add some links into with, with this video um what if your mind 
was a mirror of your what if your body was a mirror of your consciousness what if there was a mind body connection what if all of the studies about epigenetics are real what if we have the power to influence our well-being what if by saying yes to what feels right to us and saying no to what doesn't feel right to us we're being kind and we're helping our body mind and spirit to be in harmony it's something to be aware of and to be open with and you know there's so much depth of, of, of knowledge out there on this about how different organs have different um, connections to different emotions how different chakras when they're in balance have a certain way of being and when they're out of balance can manifest themselves physically if you're open to it message me i've got loads of references for all this kind of stuff um but I, for me personally i find it incredibly empowering that things aren't just happening to us they are happening as a message that something's out of balance and that we can do something about that that we're not victims that we have the power to take a radical inventory of our life and look at what is working and what isn't working and do something about it so that's all i'm going to say on that uh, thank you for listening to me and i wish you well